Hi, this is Ray Mosholder with an apology. And uh, I had thought that I'd shut this down right where it belonged, but there was more and I didn't know that. And uh, so I stand, no, 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 no. I sit corrected. Let's pick this story back up. Last month, if only to resolve the matter in my own mind, I slipped surreptitiously through the town of Hyde River and once again climbed saddle horse. What I expected, I found. The cavern where the dragon had made its lair was blasted shut. I looked all through my camper and whatever gear I had left after the looting, trying to find that small dragon scale that I'd found the day the dragon trapped me. And I suppose it vanished, simply ceased to exist the moment the dragon vanished. So all the evidence is gone, and the dragon is once again a myth, guarded by believers and ignored by skeptics. To keep the memory vivid, I, and so to be sure I didn't dream the whole thing, I make frequent trips to Oak Springs to visit Evelyn and her boys and to visit Levi's grave. Yes, he really is buried in a family plot near West Fork. Up the road from the cemetery, I always pull off at a popular viewpoint, and I gaze upon the Hyde River Valley as it stretches and winds far to the north. I viewed the lazy river and the steep tree-laden mountains in all four seasons now, and even photographed them with one of Cliff's cameras. It's not that I'm enthralled by the view, majestic as it is, is because I'm haunted by the possibility that one day, though I hope it never happens, I might detect an unnatural ripple in the clouds that gather over saddle horse, or a delicate serpentine window of sliver flickering for only an instant against the pink sky of sunset. It happened. I want to remember. If it happens again, I want to know. Because others must be told. I know, and I now add this, my own account to the letters the cryptic notes, the diaries, and the press accounts gleaned by Levi Cobb from the past century. I expect my story will be largely ignored by those who come after me, but who knows? Just might prove useful that the next hapless soul who suspects he's being followed, marked, and hunted by those insidious golden eyes. After all, we live, all of us, in Hyde River. We all have our dragon. Now, there's still something more. It's the oath, an interview with Frank Peretti. So here it is, the question and the answer by Peretti. All of your novels have a specific theme you weave into them. What was the theme for the oath and why did you land on it? Well, the oath deals with sin and how it controls and eventually destroys us. We can blind ourselves to sin and deny that it's even an issue. Some time ago, I was in a situation in which some friends 
were involved in a moral compromise, but had convinced themselves that they were doing nothing wrong. They weren't hurting anybody. There would be no consequences. The scriptures didn't really say what they said. God wouldn't mind, they said. In the meantime, it seemed their friends and their family were in a state of denial, unwilling to face what was happening, and acting like there was no problem. It reminded me of a television commercial about alcoholism in which an elephant is rampaging through a house while the family members act totally unaware of its presence. The point was loved ones can have an alcoholic in the home but refuse to see it. Sin can work the same way. Even as it's getting its hooks into us, and destroying us. We can choose to believe there's nothing happening. Everything's hunky-dory. And that's no big deal. As I said in the introduction, sin is the monster we love to deny. Second, do you think we tend to take the topic of sin far too lightly today? Oh, of course. You'll recall Levi Cobb's admission, admonition to Steve Benson that one way to thwart the dragon was to care. Before the victims of the dragon perished, they displayed a carefree, cavalier attitude toward their behavior and were oblivious to a black oozing mark that was so obvious to everybody else. All around us, we see the consequence of sin. The consequences are everywhere. We can see it destroying others, even as, as it's destroying us. But we don't get a clue. Fans of yours rave about the invisible dragon within this novel. Do you have as much fun creating that character as it seems? Well, it's always fun to toy around with some weird element in a story. Whether it's a dragon, prophetically enabled eyes, a false Christ, or angels and demons. But I never wanted to, the dragon to be just another monster. He's highly thematic, an allegory for sin, a real personality, and a plotting, scheming killer with a direct link to Steve Benson's heart. He matches the description found in God's warning to Cain. Sin is crouching at the door, wanting to devour you, but you must overcome it. So keep all this in mind as you read the book, and the meaning will come across. Fourth, a person's heart, literally turning black and oozing fluid through their shirt, is quite a graphic image within the novel. Describe how you came up with that image. Well, it, it just think about how sin works. First, there's a small pang of conscience. You know you've done something wrong and you feel a pang in your heart. The longer you deny the presence of sin, the bigger and more ugly it grows. At first, you can hide it from others, but eventually... It becomes so obvious that everyone else can see it, even if you don't. Ultimately, it's one big, black, smelly mark upon your life. What has the number one question or comment about this novel been from your fans? <laughs> this would make a great movie. 
Are there any plans in the works for this novel to be made, made into a movie? Well, God is moving us more and more into that medium. We've already made Hangman's Curse into a successful film and DVD. And we're just finishing up the movie version of The Visitation. The Oath is an exciting and logical next step. The trick is going to be raising enough money to meet a much larger balance budget. Obviously, this film is going to require some major special effects. When you think back to the writing of this novel, what is your favorite scene or moment within the oath? <laughs> I love all this book, but I especially like the harrowing chase scene in the end. Will you release the New York Times best-selling novel, Monster, recently? What's next? Well, a first for me, and that's co-authoring a novel. Ted Decker and I are doing a book together, a highly thematic thriller about a haunted house. It will be available in April of 2006. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, I didn't know he was going to say that, but what's the next book I'm going to read now that this is, that the oath is over? Although they say the oath remains. The next book, because it's trick-or-treat time, I'm going to read that book. Monster. It'll be the next book instead of the oath when we get to this place in my readings. Don't miss it.